How do you do everything science will get? So you still get my exchange and sadicity. Cause I'm just a teenage dirtbag baby. I'm just a teenage dirtbag baby. Listen to Iron Maiden, baby, with me. Ooh, 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 ooh. Soil! So science that's saying we're going to look at. Cations absorbed onto the surface of soil silicates and aluminum silicates are in equilibrium and can be exchanged with cations in soil water. Soil silicates and aluminum silicates are able to absorb hydrogen ions and release cations. So explain how cations on the surface of soil silicates and aluminum silicates become available to plants. And nutrient cations on the surface of soil silicates and aluminum silicates are replaced if the concentrations of hydrogen ions and sodium ions are too high. Explain how acidic or saline conditions, i.e. high concentration of hydrogen ions or sodium ions, deplete the nutrient values of soil. So silicates are present in soils. Um, clays are an important uh, component of soils and they're made up of silicates. So down here we have uh, kalanite, for example, which is one of the minerals that is a clay. Um, they have a negative surface charge due to the presence of these silicates and aluminum silicates in their structure. So here we can see in the kalanite, we can see there's all these oxygens here and many of those have a negative charge and that's what generates that negative surface charge. It's all made up of the silicate anion, so the silicate tetrahedron down here. Um, they're joined in particular ways. We have aluminiums in there as well, incorporated into the structures. Um, if it's an aluminum silicate, but, uh, they have this negative surface charge and that's what we're talking about. So in the negative surface charge, you can get cations like uh, potassium, sodium, calcium, magnesium, ammonium and hydrogen. They can absorb onto that negative surface. So here we can see the negative surfaces, and here we can see those positive cations that are stuck there. Um, and they can be exchanged with the water that's surrounding here, um, which we call the soil water. So the ions can stick to the surface of the clay, then they can dissolve back into the soil water and can then be used by plants. So that's what cation exchange is in this, in this situation. So what that means is there's this continuous movement of uh, ions between clay surfaces and the ions dissolved in the soil, soil and we call that ion exchange. So down here we can see, if we look at potassium for example, we've got potassium that's absorbed onto the surface of the clay, we've got uh, calcium in the soil water. We can exchange the potassium that was stuck to the clay that can go into the soil water, and the calcium that was um, in the uh, soil water can get stuck to the clay. And this is an equilibrium, so because it's an equilibrium we can adjust that. So if a plant absorbs some of the potassium ions from the soil water, over here, potassium ions can then be released from the clay back into the soil water, so that we maintain a concentration of potassium ions um, in the soil water. So we get this equilibrium being established and restored. If you add fertilizers to soil, you can increase the concentration of these ions, um, and that can help plants because you have uh, more of the ions that the plants need to grow. So what happens if we mess around with the equilibria? Um, if we add acid rain, for example, then we're increasing the concentration of hydrogen ions in the soil water. So if we increase the number of hydrogen ions over here, then the hydrogen ions can displace some of those metal ions that are stuck onto the clay over here, and we get the hydrogen ions stuck to the clay instead of the metal ions. So and that's what we see down here. So down here we have our clay, we've got our negative surface charge, and we've got our positive ions that are stuck to it. Um, if we have acid rain washing through, then we're going to have some hydrogen ions replacing those metal ions, those cations, and those cations are going to go into the soil water. Um, and this is called leaching. Metal ions can go into the soil, and this could be good. The uh, metal ions could be absorbed by plants, but the Metal ions that aren't absorbed by the plants will stick in the soil water, they'll go into the subsoil and eventually into the water table and then just be washed away and that'll make them unavailable um, to be used by the plants. So, like I said, this can be helpful. If you're releasing magnesium, calcium, potassium ions, plants need that to grow. Um, but if you have other metal cations like aluminium, which is quite toxic, if you have acid rain going through your soil, then you can release those aluminium ions and that can be quite dangerous for plants. Um, aluminium is toxic, it will go into the soil water, which can poison the plants, but also it will go into the groundwater and eventually into streams, rivers and ponds and lakes, and it can do damage there, killing off um, fish as well. So now let's just talk about sodicity. So sodicity occurs when you've got a higher than normal proportion of sodium cations attached to the negative surface of the clays. So you have more of the sodium ions than you have other cations. So when soils do this, we call them sodic soils. So this happens when you have lots of uh, sodium ions present in soil water. So again, we have our equilibrium. Um, you have uh, some of your metal ions that are stuck to the clay. You add sodium ions in the water, and then you get uh, the sodium ions in the soil water replacing the metal ions on the clay, and you get the sodium ions stuck to the clay. So you have this higher concentration of sodium ions on the surface, uh, absorbed to the surface of the clay, compared to other ions. There's a problem with this. Um, the sodic soils, they're just not good for growing plants. Some things that can happen, you weaken the bonds between the soil particles, so the soil doesn't hold together as well. Um, Water doesn't flow through the soil as well. Um, you can get this so 
really hard crust forming on the surface of the soil. What that means is if it rains, then the water that's falling on this soil, it doesn't absorb into the soil at all. It just runs off until it gets uh, you know, taken away. And you can also get an increase in erosion. So all of these things aren't great uh, if you're trying to grow plants. So this lowers the quality of the soil because rather than having other ions that the plant will need to grow, like potassium, and we've got potassium, calcium, magnesium, um, rather than having those absorbed to the surface of the clay particles, you've got the sodium ions instead. So there's lots of sodium and fewer of the other ions that the plant will need to grow. Um, so because there's fewer of those ions, the plants won't have as ac much access in that equilibrium uh, to the ions that they need to grow, and that reduces the ability of the plants to grow too. So now for the science, we looked at soil silicates and aluminosilicates, cation exchange, and we looked at sodicity. That's the science today. See ya. <laughs>